Hello, this is Michael Veach. Welcome to the Vodcast for Sunday Arts on ABC TV, the all-Australian arts program for everyone with a love of arts and culture. I hope you find something here to inspire you. There are more Vodcasts at abc.net.au slash tv slash video. Oh, and don't forget to watch Sunday Arts on ABC television every Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock. We'll see you then. <laughs> Now, a few weeks ago, I was lucky enough to visit South Australia's magnificent Flinders Ranges. It's not hard to see why its colours and terrain so moved one of our finest landscape artists, Sir Hans Heysen. And now the thousand kilometre long Heysen Trail is allowing new generations of artists to be so inspired. A group of nine of them, in fact, recently set off along the trail with easels and cameras to create a new artistic legacy. We've got... Um nine artists from different parts of Australia. This is their first stop before we head off to the Flinders Ranges. This is the most wonderful preserved artist studio in Australia. This has got the essence of Hans Heiss and it looks like he's just stepped out for a minute and will come straight back again. Hans Heysen was uh, the living legend. He was probably, you know, painting by painting, the most successful Australian artist of the 20th century. It'd be very hard to beat him on that. I'm just trying to imagine how it was for him in this space, where how where he was painting, where he was putting his painting, and, and the light, just getting the feel of how it must have been painting in here. The way he uses paint is beautiful. Mm. Hans Heysen was one of those artists who painted these extraordinary soaring gum trees, who made us see the bush in a different way, who was the first to really open up the Flinders Ranges for artists. We're going to the Flinders Ranges, we're going to visit Will Pina Pound and some of the more iconic spots further up along the trail. And uh, we'll be sketching and painting along the way. It'll be exciting because we've got nine different artists who all work in their own way. We've got the crazy world of Reg Mombasa, artists like Lucy Cullerton and Ewan McLeod. So uh, it'll be exciting to see the final works. This is our first day after our sort of long trek. Everyone's competitively getting up ready to paint, hoping to get the morning light. I've had a cup of coffee and a piece of toast, drink of water and look around, Dingo's breakfast ready to go. <laughs> We've got this beautiful backdrop but also these strange weird bales of hay that have been just plonked in the middle. Just drawn in my picture ready for the sun and the sun's just come so the painting's just started. I feel like the race is on. Got a great impression of a glowing mountain. It's just red and ultramarine and it's all beautifully every rock's just hit by the sun beautifully highlighted and very soon a few more minutes and we'll hit the hay and that'll glow as well. Oh, look at it now, far out. <laughs> because I'm from Tasmania this is just like <laughs> so different. Uh, what you're looking at you're seeing so many things that uh, potentially can drive an image. You know, it could be the colour, it could be the light, it could be just the, um, the sort of physical aspect of the landscape itself, you know. What I think I'm going to do here is just do some sort of immediate recordings, like in the moment, like I am now, with some quick uh, watercolour and gouache, and then photograph, and then when I get back to the studio, you know, sift through all the information and work something up. I like to finish things on the spot if possible, so you don't have to fiddle around afterwards. Yeah. Nice those haystacks, nice and buttery and luscious. Big slabs of stringy butter. Charcoal's my, my very favourite thing, I think, as, a, as an art material. Black charcoal and these chalky coloured pencils, they're not lead pencils which uh, I don't like, particularly like, these are good because you can um, you can smudge them and you can fix them and go over them and get, get several layers happening so I never go to the edge of the picture, the edge of the paper, that makes me ill almost to go to the edge, it's just never do it, I've been doing this for years and years and years, to go to the edge it's not right, it's like falling off the edge of the world or something. It takes time for us, for me, 
just to walk around and look and feel it and then start. But uh, I'm warming up to starting. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time. I'm just not really sure what, what, what I want to get out of it, so I have to have a, you know, I have to have a really good look and I have to sort of gather some information and then, you know, sort of process that and hopefully come up with something different. And it takes time to figure out. We've got a lot to get through in a short period of time, so it's time to shift camp. We're just going to take a gentle stroll into the middle of this, the pound, and then those that are keen to climb up, Wangara Lookout, it's just, a, just another 15 minutes past that, and um, from there we'll get spectacular views inside the pound. at the entrance to the World Painter Pound, um, so we're surrounded by it, um, kind of in a crater, but we're told it's not a crater as a result of any kind of impact. The biggest challenge is it's very, very flat. There's not very much definition, there's no shadows. One of the things I like about these paints, actually, is they have a mind of their own. They kind of run off all over the show, and I paint them quite wet, so they keep running and when I look at them a few hours later they've kind of done all sorts of things especially in the back of the car. That was a, a fortuitous thing when Steve went and sat down. I always like a kind of a bit of a human presence that was that's a sort of a thing that I do I think. This is such a vast space around here with my studies I'm just trying to focus on kind of vantage points that really interest me. I love the detail of the ridges and the harshness of the blue sky against the ridge. It's sort of a graphic element you can pick out. I'll do a variety of paintings and then choosing the best ones that I you know, think work well and then make bigger paintings of them. My more recent work's been going deeper into the detail of things. So when I'm confronted with a vista like this, it's just a bit overwhelming. This bush is, um, presents lots of interesting um, tonal and linear sort of options and um, it's a bit sort of perverse <laughs> climbing all this way up and then not, not dealing with the view. I want to see everything and I think if you sit in one spot and just do plain air, often you don't see everything, you don't get every, every possibility. Basically I paint in the studios so it's a matter of gathering the information before you, know, before you go and do that. After a couple of days on the trail I can clearly see why Hans Heysen was so drawn to this most amazing landscape. When I was painting a river gum, I, I could understand why he painted them. I mean, they're, they're actually quite extraordinary. Don't know why he painted quite so many. <laughs> I haven't had this much fun since the Boy Scouts. <laughs>